Hey YouTube, Mike here. How are we doing today? Hope we all had a very nice and safe week. Okay, um, today um, I'm going to be finishing up on the air piping. And I'll tell you, if I really knew the reaction and uh, comments and emails that I've gotten from <clears throat> these past four videos with the vac and the air, man, I would have done this a lot sooner. So, um, okay, today what we're going to do is go over the actual IPS fittings. Now, uh, I guess it's uh, part of age, but, and I know I've shown this in previous shop tour videos, my little mini sustainer rack over to my left, where I have a mini sustainer that's filled with air fittings. Why I did not bring it out to show you and show the different fittings and valves and bleeder parts. Maybe senility, I don't know. But today we're going to cover the different IPS fittings. Now, in the previous video, you saw the different systems with the Upanor and the <clears throat> CPVC. And to come down with that um, uh, drop your elbow, where it becomes either CPVC or PEX to uh, an IPS thread. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you would then go and put something like your um, female chalk and you would use, say, a quarter inch nipple. Now, this is just, these aren't brass. This is what I had on the truck just for demonstration purposes. And then you would use um, a quarter by half bushing. And then that would go into the actual chuck, the, the uh, drop your elbow. But what I mentioned and what I do not have is when you want to come down and make a drop. So again, I would highly recommend using a brass T and you can get them half by three eight and half by quarter so that you can get your chalk fitting in but they do sell um, all different types of reducer bushings reducer couplings and actually reducer nipples and we'll go over that in a minute so and I'll just give you an example here is a 3 8 female by quarter inch male and it's an adapter coupling and then here, let me find it. Oh, here we go. Here is a 3.8 male by quarter inch male nipple that actually has hex on it for you to use either an adjustable wrench or an open end wrench to make it up. So, you have your fitting that will come out of the come down and come out from the wall. So the first thing you want to do is you need to reduce it, say, from half inch to three eight. So you're going to get yourself a half by three eight bushing. And we'll go over putting the tape and the compound in a minute. Then you can put on your three eight by quarter nipple. And then you would screw on your chalk fitting. Now you could use a half by quarter and then just a quarter inch nipple. But by the time this is going to go in about another quarter of an inch. So air is going to flow into here. And then you have your chalk fitting. Then coming out of the bottom, here is the valves. that These are stainless steel valves. And again, I'm going to go over every of these little fittings. I'm going to, pre I'm going to tell you a very good place to find them. So now out of the bottom of this, you're going to use another half by three eight because it's a three eight valve. Then I have these actual three eight nipples again that have a hex for making of them up. And where you find these 
is in Tractor Supply, Northern Tools, or if you happen to have a farm that with a supply house on it, and I have one right here, and that's where I get these fittings from, because they use air and hydraulic fittings, and they stock them for all the surrounding farms if the guy happens to have a hardware store on his farm. So here is what you're going to do with your bleeder. Now, you can get something to reduce it down, and let me get that, sh here we go. This happens to be, and I'm going to show you what this one is for, but you can get a 3.8, or if you happen to use a quarter inch valve, you would screw that into there, and then as you can see, it's a barb fitting. Then you just put a, you just take a, a and I have them in here, you just take a small gear clamp, and then you can actually put a small length of hose. Home Depot sells them for, I think, 10 feet for like $1.95. And then just put it down to the floor, and you can just do this into a bucket. So this would your actual be your, your drain, your air, and your drain. And you can put it in any direction that you want as you, if you make it up. So this would be the end of your line. <clears throat> this would most likely be... Like if you're going to be hooking this to a tool like Craig's uh, pocket hole uh, machine that was air driven. Um, any type, but if with a hose, again, your hose ha at the end, all you have to do is push one of these fittings, well, not one of those fittings, one of these fittings, and you can actually adapt one with a serrated with another hose. And just push this in. And then the pressure will just push all the moisture out into a bucket. Because that's really your end of your line, is your hose. So, that's what you have here. Now, on your tanks. Now, I know I got, um, a lot of you guys, you know, said you had them iron. You were, and you have, you, iron was fine. You just have, main, you got to do a little maintenance on it. No, whatever you run in your, your, your shop. Whether you run copper, whether you run iron, whether you run PEX, whether you run CPVC, open or whatever. As much as the anti-rust material that you use, your tank is still metal. Now, if, unless you could find a brass tank for a compressor, which will cost you a lot of money, it's metal. And, and as you see on the bottom of all of these compressors, you have a drain. Now, a lot of these newer compressors have quarter inch turn valves. But the older compressors are gonna have these needle style valves where it's in the tank and you basically are screwing it open, which is pushing. You see that? See how it's, and then you have all these little holes. It's pushing that up in it. And then the pressure. So you got, I'll say 100 pounds of pressure on the tank. You take it down to say 25 pounds and then you open this. But with this, if it's in your garage, where is, and that's rusty water, where's it gonna go all over the garage floor? Or wherever your compressor is. So, this was the actual needle valve from my compressor. What I did, and you, again, you can find these in any store, at all, also automotive stores. Napa, True Valve, all of those stores that sell auto parts pretty much have these too. What I bought was this quarter inch ball valve that actually goes in two directions. So you have that way and that way. So it's, there's only a stop on the bottom. So what I did was I removed the quarter inch needle valve and put on this quarter inch valve. Now, the reason it's two way is depending on the position of your compressor because you always would like to pull it forward. And if, you, if it hits the tank, then you can actually go the opposite direction. So that's why it's in two different directions. It shuts off 
going three o'clock to six o'clock and it turns on going from 12 o'clock or going down to six o'clock. So then what I did was I picked up this quarter inch IPS thread by Schrader fitting, uh, excuse me, bob fitting, and I screwed it into the bottom of my tank. Then I connected a hose that was long enough to go out into my garden. And I just keep it tucked behind my tank. Then once a week, I just take that hose, throw it outside in the garden, open up the valve at 20 PSI, and you'll get air, and then all of a sudden you'll get that big surge of air shooting out with rusty water. Now, they do make for commercial compressors, and I had one of these <clears throat> on a big compressor I had at my shop in New York that actually is a timer. And it times the opening and closing cycle so that you don't have to do it and forget about it and let it go two, three, four, five, six weeks. It, you just pipe it right outside your building and it's mostly used for the big automotive repair shops and car dealerships. And it automatically blows the compressor out once a week. Pretty cool. You can also get the swivel fitting. Now I have never used, I have not put one on so I just bought it. And again, this thing was like $2 at, at a, uh, um, far, the farm supply house and what it does is it swivels so that in it, it, it get this is stiffer and they do get loose after a while but it swivels so that this thing will move in whatever direction so if you're coming off this way your pipes coming down and you're coming off this way with it and then as you can see you can add a chalk to it so now your chalk is to the side, it can come to the front, it can come to the other side, it can come on a 45, so it'll swivel in any direction. Now, chocks. What I do with mine, besides adding in here, you watch me when I use the, and I, let me grab the, bit, the large bottle, because it's just too big. So I buy air tool oil, large bottle, and I transfer it into this little tiny squirt bottle I buy at Hobby Lobby. And I squirt a little bit of oil into my nailers if I happen to use my air guns. <clears throat> You're going to get the oil into the chalk, but I like to spray a little WD-40 into this chalk. It just keeps it nice and lubricated because what's in our shop? Sawdust. So when we're going to mate it with its male end, which I'm losing everything, it goes in nice and easy. Now these are brand new. Now you have them in, in brass and you have them in this aluminum style, but as long as all of them have that actual, it looks like almost like a diamond bevel, they will mate into each other. Sears does, some of the older Sears have, it's beveled and then flat. They will not go together with each other. But as you can see, it'll go together with each other. No matter which one. And then I do have one. You can buy Home Depot, the Husky ones. They sell them in kits. You can get like uh, three females and three males. And they make them, <coughs> excuse me, quarter inch. And then they make them a quarter inch male. And they make them quarter inch female. Depending on what you need. Now, I mentioned on my compressor that I have high flow chocks. And this is a high flow chock. Let me grab one of the older ones, one of the other ones. And I have it again, male and female. But do you see the difference? That's the difference in the chock. These are great for your tools. So everyone, all of your, your air tools, your nailers, hopefully you have the swivel on it, the ball. If you happen to have any automotive air tools, they're the ones that get the male. The female is on the hose. But the hose, that orange hose that I showed you, that's 12 feet long. What I did, it just comes as a hose. I bought, now these are like nine bucks a piece, but they're high flow. 
You see, look at the difference. It's double, it's like literal. I got the drops today. You see, you gotta fit it right inside of it. Maybe I'll drop that one too. So, um, you know, you buy two, two males, two females, put it on the hose, chock it from your tank to your, your pressure reducing valve and your moisture trap. Again, let me just show you this little moisture trap. <clears throat> This is, a, this is a moisture trap, like this is quarter inch, and I'll show you here. See it? Quarter inch, but it's high flow. It's a full, it's almost a full inside, and every fitting has this um, nor, uh, flat spots for you to use either like an adjustable wrench or a, an open-end wrench. So your moisture trap and mine Mine happens to be half inch. This is quarter inch. Then you have your drain to drain out. You have your filter. You have your clear so you can see the moisture in it. Just turn it on. That's off. Turn it on. It'll blow out. It's a, it, all of them are little barbs so you can get a little hose on it. All right. What else we got in here? So to show you some of the fittings. Okay, here. To show you some of the fittings that I have. It's always good also to have, um, to keep uh, plugs with you inside. And this is a mini sustainer with the insert. And I'll show you, I got an insert right here. Here's an insert. This has to be one, two, three, four, five. So this is the inserts that fit into the mini sustainer. Woodcraft has them. So that fits right in there. But this one is five. So I'll show you the different fittings that I have. Now here is, well no, this is a, no, a nozzle fitting, so that's going to be, see here's a larger um, serrated fitting. Why am I losing everything here? Where did that serrated fitting go? No, no, that's not it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so you see, I carry two different types. They're quarter inch, but they have a little bit bigger hose on them. Then I have these bushings, which are um, 3 8 by quarter. Then I have the 3 8 by quarter female to male. Then I have 3 8 um, female by quarter inch male. So uh, keep one of each fitting so that you can pretty much put almost anything together when you... Uh, 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 putting these IPS fittings together. Now, let's go over, we're not going to make one up because it's pretty simple once you get it on, but let me show you. All right, you want to put this bushing into this T. Any of the box stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, Plumbing Supply, you get yourself, this is the thin uh, Teflon tape. They make them in different thickness, different widths. But you want to get the thinnest that they make. And you want to get a small can of compound. I like to use, it's the white Teflon. I, I like this the best because it does not harden. It makes, the compound is a sealant and it's also a lubricant as you're making up the fitting. You're, cr you're creating heat. So it's a lubricant. You want to wrap this tape in the direction that you're going to be making up the fitting. So, you're going to be making up the fitting. Just say, I'm a lefty, so I gotta do it this way. I'm making the fitting up this way, which is, if I'm facing it, it's clockwise. So, again, like I said, I'm a lefty, so I always, I seem to be, I always do it. You want the tape to be pressure, for, so falling away from you. Because as you wrap the tape, you're going to use the, the little spool to keep pressure on the tape. So you get it. Now, of course, this is a little more difficult with the smaller fitting. So then you go one, two, three, four, five. And when you get to the end, put your finger here and push up. Because what you're going to do is you're going to push the Teflon tape into the thread. Then when you're done, take your finger, your, th your 
and just run it around the tape and it actually molds into the thread. Then take your, just take a little bit of compound. Again, don't, you know, you're not Picasso. Just put a little bit of compound around it. Now also go in the direction that you put the tape on. Because if you start going this way, you're going to catch the end, then you're going to unravel it. The compound is sticky, and it's going to catch that end. You get the compound on, and just and take your time. Make sure that it goes in smoothly when you're first putting it in. If you feel it start to bind, stop, back up. But I'm going to show you a trick in a minute if you happen to do what they call a cross thread. Put it on. Take your, either your pair of channel locks, uh, if you have a, 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 an assortment of open-end wrenches, they fit on this, an adjustable wrench, make this up. Don't go like a gorilla. Make it up until you feel it get tight, and then stop. The compound tape will do the, make up the difference. All right, now let me grab this old fitting that I have here. Say you have some old fittings. You took apart your ass system. Somebody gave you fittings. And you want to use them. Now remember, the air, there's a little bit of moisture in them. They're going to they're gonna last. It's not like you unscrew water pipe. It's all rusty, corroded. No, throw it in the garbage. Okay. You see on the end of it, I got some compound. I got some tape. That end, I'm clear. So what you want to do, you can actually take a wire brush, brush it, take some steel wool, steel wool it. What we do... We have all fitting that we put it in, but then oh, it's too short. We took it out, put it back in the nipple tray or whatever. We take our modal tool, your Dremel. Let's just call it a Dremel. It's a Milwaukee. And we use a, that small wire brush. And basically, we just remember eye protection. I wear mine all the time. And then just go around the thread. Just go around the thread. You're not gonna. It's, you're not using a knife. You're not using a punch. You're using this wire brush. It's gonna do nothing to the threads. You get it around the threads, around the threads, around the threads, and I just got hit in the face. Okay. There you go. Nice and clean. And now let's grab our. There it is. Grab our bushing, and see, nice and nice. Now, say you make the mistake of cross-threading it. Most of the time when you cross-thread something, you're cross-threading, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. You have, uh, this thing is too heavy, let me get this one. You have what they call, let's see, can you see that? You have what you call a starter thread, right there. So that starts the thread to start making it up. Threads are tapered. They're cut tighter in the beginning and a little bit more shallower at the end. So as you're making it up, it gets, it be, it be, it gets tighter. That's how it works. So, just say you accidentally cross-threaded it you most likely have jumped the first starter thread. Take a hacksaw, ply metal blade. Um, this one happens to be, um, it's uh, 32, 32 per inch, 32 uh, per teeth per inch, that. So find the starter thread. It's easier for me to, if you see what I'm doing, find the starter thread and just run it back like that. Just keep running it back. Then take your fitting that you were using. And why am I throwing this back in all the time? Take your fitting and keep checking it. Take a fresh fitting, not the fitting that you're using, because you most likely have compound and stuff inside that fitting. So you just take your hacksaw blade and just run it over the starter thread like that. And what you're doing is you're spreading the starter thread. Now, if it happens to be a half inch fitting or a half inch nipple, and you happen to have a set of dies, you can run this in the die. 
because the starter part of the die is wider than the end. So it's going to grab and it's going to redo that starter thread. You can also run your finger. Now, I don't have nails. I bite my fingernails. But my uncle used to take his nail and he would find where it was actually jumped and then hold it, then take the file and just file it. But you have to do it with a, with a, very, with a fine hacksaw blade. And they're very inexpensive to keep around. And that's, that's it. That's what you would do. That makes the thread back good again. And then you just take your, again, I'm going to do it in my direction. You just take your tape, put it on. I'm, I, I just know how to manipulate my fingers to do it. It is going to jump around a little bit on you. So you just do one, two, three, four, five. Then I, we take our finger like this and we pull and push. And then take, we, you know, of course, throw it down and we r r run our finger all the way around in the direction that you're going. And then take our compound and go in the same direction. Remember, you don't want any of the tape because that tape is thin. And it actually could, like, you know, when you stretch a balloon, that's what it looks like. It'll get over and it'll actually impede the flow of whatever. I mean, remember, this is you air or, or if you're repairing a, a, a water pipe at your house, it's the same thing. Okay? So, um, and then you just put everything into your, you know, just say you got your moisture trap. Then you wanted to take, just say you wanted to put a valve in there. You know, a little bit more tape and compound. Put it like that. So that's what I have over here. Then you take your chalk, put your chalk on. Or you can put your chalk on the hose. You can get your female version of it, of the male end. Then you have your chalk coming from your hose and then lock it on and then on this side you can do actual IPS pipe up to your reel or, or you know um, some IPS to or your whatever CPVC uh, PEX whatever so here is my and and with these there there is a direction on all of them there is a direction whether it's just a moisture trap or if it's a pressure reducing valve with the moisture trap, there's a direction. So follow the direction of it. Not follow the direction of installation, of course, but follow the direction. And I'll give you a quick, what we do with things that we have to have, like with check valves and our gas regulators. Now, of course, this is black. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a different color. We all carry these Milwaukee markers and they're all black. So what we would do is I would make a distinctive, and of course green, red, don't matter, but I would make a distinctive arrow all around this thing. Everywhere. Silver probably or gold would be the best. But of course if it's a lighter color, you would use the black. So I would make a distinctive arrow, I don't know if you could see it, all the way around it. So I know, and of course it says in and out. But a lot of times you're not paying attention, but you're paying attention by looking at it. So if you look at it, whatever direction, so just say your compressor's there, you're going that way, or there, going that way. And no matter which way you're putting this thing, you know, also if it has a mounting bracket, you know that, you know, if, if you put the mounting bracket facing this way, and you're going this way and you go like that, now it's in the wrong direction. So at least when you mount the mountain bracket, you could see it. Um, you could take, um, they got that, they got the white, uh, uh, actually would be perfect for this, is white out. Perfect. So white out would be perfect for it because it'll dry nice and it'll just stay on. At least you know what the direction of the flow is. All right. Um, I hope, uh, oh, I, I hope these videos were, very informative to you, and um, again, if you have any questions, if you have comments,
please um, drop me um, in the description below. There will be uh, um, my email, and um, we'll um, I'll answer them. And I know I've got quite a few emails. I've spoken to quite a few of you people. Um, I hope it was helpful. Uh, I hope your systems are going along pretty good. And um, you know, like I said, I really would have done this a lot sooner if I knew uh, what a good response that, that I, I had off of it. And I guess a lot of you are noticing in the background here. Um, there's a there's um I, I've been you know I've been racing radio control cars, NASCARs, um, short course trucks. I've been doing it for years. Um, kind of stopped. Um, the NASCARs I really like because I'm a huge NASCAR fan. And I love racing the NASCARs. And we used to race out in Daytona Speedway right after the Daytona. So in, in um, three weeks, there was a Daytona Spectacular. And we used to, with the club that I belonged to, Thunder Racing, we used to race in the Daytona Spectacular where we raced <clears throat> our RC cars in the pit garages. So we would actually set up our tables. And I, every, for the three years I did it, I set it up in the number 20 uh, garage. And we would have a 350-foot track with a driver's stand and people, I mean, we'd have tons of people watching us race an oval. We race truck, we race uh, NASCAR, Legends cars. So the gentleman that runs it, um, uh, Mike Borland, and if you guys want a really good uh, Mike's weather page on Facebook, the guy is a phenomenal, uh, he's like an amateur um, weather guy, but right on the money. So it's Mike's weather page on Facebook. Uh, he runs this Snowbirds. It's the largest RC race in the world. And it's here in Orlando, Florida, and it happened last week. It starts on a Monday, and it ends on a Sunday. And they had 700, almost 800 entries, 15, 1,600 cars, so that's like two or three cars per person. But I have never, ever, and it, they take the whole, it's the, I think the Renaissance Radisson Hotel, they take the whole hotel. You you book a room, and it's in the conference room. They set up this wood and carpet, and they race oval on road. They race a oh, bunch of different classes. So I made up my mind, next year I'm going. So I grabbed, pulled everything out of storage, and I started back with the radio control. And I really, really, I'm very passionate about rock rolling. And these are my rock crawlers. They're quite dusty. They're made from a company called G-Made out of Korea. <clears throat> They're probably one of the best, but look at the articulation of this thing. This is a competitive truck. They're slow, and there are it's the second largest RC uh, group. Uh, the first is actually drifting. And if you guys want to see some really beautiful looking cars, just uh, look up RC Drifting on YouTube. But rock crawling, I mean, I'm going to actually set up a little course in my backyard where I have like, I can't grow nothing. So I'm just going to set up rock there. Put some bush, some plants, and I'll just have a little course. But this is my competitive, it runs off of a nickel cadmium battery, uh, steering servo, speed control, motor, receiver. Um, and then this one I bought because it's a Toyota Tundra. So this is what they call a trail truck. A lot of metal on this. It's all kit. But this truck, as you can see, I can put headlights in it, winch. You can actually put two people. And if you ever seen some of those movies, you know, where the guy's driving, but the, the RC car and... He turns and the guy looks. They make people that do that. They make girls in bikinis that sit in the passenger seat. Guys, whatever, any type of guy to sit in the driver's seat and move. I have uh, roof, roof light, tail lights, grill lights, uh, jerry cans. They make, you know, the sand plates. Here's the sand plates. This came with it. You know, to give traction if you're stuck. This mounts on the roof rack. I mean, you could set up this thing, cool a beer barbecue, they make trailers, campers, and the guys go through the trails and they do courses. The reason I really like this, and it's better for me, because um, one, you follow the truck, 
and you don't have to like, but they make rally cars where you gotta run. But these things, you just walk really nice and, and it's very slow. And you know, they take points off if your truck falls. But they are, it's really good. And I used to do it at the track I ran. Actually, it's not too far from me. He had a probably about a 125 foot course. And it, I mean, there's bridges you go across, telephone poles you gotta navigate across. It's, it's an obstacle course with these things. And they're pretty nice and it's and it's not you know they can get very expensive but you know there's a lot of ready to run kits that you can purchase for like 250 bucks it comes with radio and battery you charge it up and if you have rocks in your area see florida's flat so there ain't no like rocks and stuff around here we got to kind of make them ourselves so okay but i'll keep you posted oh let me show you what i'm going to race besides the nascar and i bought it and it's the rest of it's inside. This is just a cab of it. If you guys are familiar with the Euro trucks, like the Scania's and the, and the Mercedes and the Man, they race those turbo diesels in Europe. Well, this company called Tamaya makes one, and it's a stock class. Whatever's in the box is what you put together, and it comes with a speed control, it comes with a motor. All you have to do is put the receiver and a steering servo you could put bearings in the wheels and the transmission and in, in, in the, um, diff, the diff because it's four-wheel drive. But that's it. You cannot put anything else on there so everybody's equal. And I have one and it's all together. That I'm just letting, I got to do an inside coat on it. And um, I'm going to race that. So I'm racing two classes next year, the Oval, a NASCAR, and the On-Road. Um, I really don't care what I do. I just like doing it. So... All right, YouTube. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for all the likes, all the comments, and all the subscribes. And um, you all be safe out there. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.